Tom Liu with another episode of My Car Story. And today we're in the western suburbs of Chicago, and I'd like to start off by thanking the Geneva Concours for connecting Peter and I uh, to meet each other. So Peter, what's your last name? I'm Peter Conover. And we're in the Witness City, so you might hear a little wind, and you have a car that I've seen maybe five years ago, and I felt, where was the caretaker? I couldn't find him. And then about two years ago, I saw the car and I couldn't find the caretaker. And today, so I feel like I've dated this car already, and today I get to hold its hand, and Peter gets to hold his hand and share it with us. So, Peter, what car are we sharing with our fans? This is a 1957 Aston Martin DB Mark III. And this one, well, just perfect. So, let's take a look at it. Now, it's perfect because it has been restored, and this one, well, it looks like it's brand new. We start with the iconic grill, which started in, well, 1957. So here is that grill, and we'll actually show you the grill before it, and you'll see the difference. We'll do that in the trunk and treats. Peter, um, this car has a name. What's this car's name? We call her Miss Moneypenny. Miss Moneypenny. <laughs> of course you do. So there's our David Brown that nice little piece of trim right up the center into a wonderful hood scoop. I just want to share something with you as well. You can see the screw there, your turn lights, and you drive this one. I do, about 3,000 miles a year. 3,000 miles a year. Now, when did you first pick this one up? Uh, I acquired it in 2005. And, go ahead, why did you pick this, not just pick this car, but why an Aston Martin? Well, I had been at the British Motor Museum in Bewley, England, and they had a James Bond exhibition, and that's where I first found out about, James, about Aston Martin cars. Through the James Bond exhibition. Uh, exactly. And I bought a book that went through the different lines of cars that Aston had over the years, and the one that I fell in love with was the DB Mark III. Is this a vent for the for the uh, engine, or what is that this vent? This is for cooling your feet. Cooling your feet, okay. And these are true spokes. Nicely, though, you can see why the Aston Martin won the Le Mans in 59, yes? Yes, indeed. And I can see why, because they have disc brakes on it here, which was one of the reasons why Jaguar first took that a couple of years before, because everybody else was not braking later and they got to brake later and accelerate quicker now is yours a, can we shut that just so it's a real clean shut on the trunk there yeah. we'll reopen it and i'll show this piece of jewelry so this is a hatchback one of the first cars that had the hatchback option and i also noticed that yours has twin exhaust which was an option then gave it about an extra 15 horsepower if you add this, the twin exhaust. So what is the overall horsepower? Is it like 176. 176. Okay. And just, you know, I think little baby tail lights, but just right for this car. And in fact, these tail lights were only on the first 100 cars. After that, they went to a different set of tail lights. Is that right? Yeah. Now, the, these are the, the same tail lights that are on TRAs, T TR3s and MGAs. Why this car out of all the cars in the world? Well, uh, as I said, I was looking for a DB Mark III. I started looking around the world for one, and this one became available in Dayton, Ohio. Really? But it didn't look like this. It certainly did not. It did not. Let's open up the trunk and treat, shall we? It had two aborted restoration attempts, and a lot of the parts were lost. So let me first start, look at, look at how nice that piece is to hold this hatch up. And let me just show the hatch, because that's pretty cool. What's the reaction when you're driving this thing? What do people do? I get a lot of thumbs up. Uh, people hang out the, their windows taking pictures of it. Uh, kids in the back windows of station wagons just love it. You're, you're James Bond. Sometimes I feel like that. Yeah, and, and, and truthfully, we're on Bond Street videoing this car. So here is the DB2, and you can see the grill difference versus the three. This is wonderful. We're actually at a church, and it's so good when we showed that picture that the chimes started going off. Now we've got the Goldfinger book, 
the James Bond thriller, the Aston Martin spare parts list. I'm going to close this book so we can show you some pieces. This was the actual book that you started to fall in love with That's the car. Right. And then this is, so to speak, the brochure for the car where it gave you some pictures of the car. And I noticed that they called it a sports saloon. About yeah, the please. Goldfinger connection. If I yeah, go show ahead. You, and show you, I want to show you the chapter in the book. Let me read and grab it. You can grab that. I'll continue to show some of this. The quarter window opens for improvement. There's the grill that we're going to see in a second. Talks about the engine. 78 horsepower. 178. We're not going to uh, quibble. Yeah. I need the specifications there. Yeah, so you should be able to pause any of that. And this is an interesting photograph because this was like a uh, Advertisement photograph as well. The airline. This is your certification showing that the car is the real deal. Which engine number, body number, etc. In a wonderful book. And we'll just show this. This is actually some details on the car. It was originally dispatched to California. And this gives all the details of the car. All right, show me the gold finger. Yeah. In chapter seven, Ian Fleming got the nomenclature quite wrong. He called it a DB3, and it's actually a DB Mark III. But this is the book of Goldfinger, which preceded the movie, obviously. And in the book, this is the car that James Bond was driving. This is the one. By the time they made the movie, a few years later, the then current car was a, was a DB5. So that's why the DB5 became famous as the Bond car. Although this was the real Bond car. Indeed. Indeed. All right. So let's uh, show me where you open the uh, hatch at. Sure. I saw you on this side of the car. A little lever right there. So there's our lever there. There's a nice angle on that entryway, as you can see. And then it's open on this side, your DB2-4 instruction book. And let's go over and look at the back seat. Kind of an interesting back seat, right? Yeah. It's the, the, the rear of the back seat folds over to get more cargo space. So with that combined with the hatch, it makes it a really great car for touring because it can fit a lot of luggage in it. That's good. Now, have you ever had actually anybody sit back there? Uh, only very, very small people. Yeah, very small people. Okay, let's take a look at the other side of the car. And did I... These are the speakers in the back? Yes, those are not original. Okay, that's all right. The door has a nice angle to it, too. It if does. you just look at the side, it shifts to the person's body. This wonderful chrome work. The handle pull. What a great instrument cluster. Oh, that's good, right? And the seats. Very comfy. Very comfy. I'm going to sit on the sill. Four speed? Four speed. A little mirror here. Your turn signals? Yes. What's the button on the end? 
Well, that's a kind of a long answer. All right. It's the same switch as on the other side. Okay. Which is the high and low beam switch. Ah. And the button on the end of it is so that you could flash your high beam without having to turn your lights on. Very nice. But because it's the same switch, there's a button on the, the left side which doesn't do anything. So this one doesn't do anything and that one does. So they just did it to make it look aesthetically they, pleasing. They take the parts off the shelf as most British auto manufacturers did at the time and they use the same switch. Is this for... That is... Go ahead and flip it up. That's how we put the gas in the car. Oh, the gas. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Okay, so there's our gas filler. Let's uh, open up the uh, engine compartment, okay. shall we? Oh, so here is our vent here. I see that now. Oh, some wonderful pieces here. I'm not jumping right in, because right off the bat, I see some very important toys. That's great. You might want to see the uh, toolbox that comes with the car. Oh, that's priceless right there, isn't it? Isn't that nice? And over on the other side, you've got the knockoff hammer and the jack. All right, let's close that one. Let me read it. The nice thing about your car is there's lots of little things to read. It's SU, Standard Union, I believe. Uh, Skinner Union. Skinner Union, sorry. Windscreen wiper. Let me get that one. It's just a little easier. A lot of the parts were just exactly the same as what Jaguar was using on their XKs at the time. And look at the framing of this car. It's the yeah. I can show you a picture of the, the frame without the body on it. It's uh, it's very interesting. It's pretty unique. The side pressure, the straight six. What, is it, what do we have here? That's the heater. The, heater. This, the scoop goes in there. That's gotcha. part of the pressure area intake. There you go. Okay, I'm following you. Let me take a look at the other side. Does the... Uh, we have to blow the horn. Does the horn sound very British? It does. All right. Here's our mallet. That's in case somebody gets too close to the car show. Here's our jack. <laughs> And what, what's in this box? Electronics. Electronics. Got all your fuses? The fuses are actually right here. Okay. And here's our exhaust side. Okay. Let's walk around the other side of it. And notice the holes in the front too for breathing. Yep. Great look at the suspension here. It's a trailing arm French suspension. It's very unique. It actually has a sway bar in an oil bath that goes from side to side. Really? There's a big, big air intake, right? Yeah. Is the air filter inside that? Uh, or is there no air filter? There's no air filter. Okay, so just directly right in. Right. Right to the sides over there where the open screens are. All right. The screens are the air filter. The screens are the air filter. Okay. Can we start it? I'll hold this so it doesn't move. I just want to see this. And then as long as it's not moving, if you'd like, you can jump out and hold it. Then I'll listen to the exhaust for just a moment. the hood for a second. Can we close that uh, trunk yep. space there? Great. And listen to this exhaust. Now was your exhaust chrome? That's how it came? Yes. That's a nice touch. Yeah, the, uh, the single exhaust is a little bit more engineered for this car, but I've never seen one with one because everybody wants to get the extra horsepower. And I don't even know if you can buy a single exhaust system anymore. Let's step on the brakes for just a second. I want to see those little baby lights. Nice. Let's give it just a rev, shall we? I think uh, 
uh, I think what's next is we should take it for a ride. Sounds great. I want to give you just a little more bonus footage of this car before we go on the ride. And as you can see, this ventilation here, so that's going to be a little bit of the theme or some of the extra perks of this car. We talked about this vent. Peter, show me how this vent opens up. Where's the handle for that one? There's a lever inside. Right there. It ends up right about by your knee. Okay. And this is the hood, obviously. Go ahead, show that's me. That's actually the parking brake. Oh, the parking brake. Yeah. And when you open it, you have it direct, has a very... Go ahead. Direct air that goes right to your feet, right where you want it. So it's comfortable. And then it flows and out it, this window. So it actually turns out to be, for a car without air conditioning, quite comfortable as long as you're moving. Nice. And then show me this little trick. Uh, let's show how the back seat works. Okay. If you're touring and you've got your golf clubs or your suitcase and you don't have anybody in the back seat, which is probably not surprising <laughs> considering its size, you can flip over back seat. Oh yeah, that gives you a lot of room. It's pretty roomy for us. Yeah, that is. It's like a little station wagon. Exactly. And show me the little secret hatch. Okay, underneath the cover is this doorway and underneath there so is this mechanism. See this, this handle? And when you open and pull that handle, I can lower this tray, which is where you will find the spare tire. The secret compartment to the James Bond car. That's right. Perfect. Okay, now that was, that was good stuff right there. All right, so we will now take this one out for a little ride. We'll see you on the ride. No better place to start your Aston Martin ride than on Bond and Westchester Boulevard. Well, when you're getting in that. And before I jump in, this is what this car originally looked like. And now, of course, it looks like that. Peter, welcome to the channel. <laughs> let's, uh, let's take our official James Bond car, or what some people might think is the pre-James Bond car, out for a ride. How are you? The, lit the literary James Bond The car. literary James Bond car. How are you? I'm great, thanks very much. Good, good. Good to be moving now. Yeah. If you want, you can pull that lever by your foot and get a little fresh air. All right, I will consider that. First of all, it looks great. I'm seeing our little mirror bounce around. Well, we've already had two people run out, literally, of their houses. And what is that? Right? I mean, uh, they knew it was something. I love the sound. See your little yellow button flashing. <laughs> so you wanted a sports car, and you got one. Let's just listen to that. So they don't open auto they don't go on automatically when you open the door. You have to turn them on. Same thing with the turn signal. It doesn't cancel by itself. You have to turn it off. Got so it. even though this was double the cost of the Jags at the time, yeah. it didn't have some of the features that the Jag came standard with. Well the Aston Martin's always been kind of double the price of the Jag, hasn't it? I mean it that's has. yes. <laughs> yes. They're like they're like brother and sister, but they don't cost the same. Well the Jags were you know, made on a production line, and the Astons were all handmade. I didn't know that. Yeah. And aluminum bodies. Indeed. Okay, so, the, you know, it stays forever. And this one is just beautiful. I love the color. I'm kind of a blue car fan, and uh, your car is just tremendous. 
Well, first of all, it's been a wonderful opportunity to hang with you and drive and take this car out. I've been, uh, as I said before, I've been seeing this car several times and I wanted to finally hold the hand of this car and I felt that this, uh, this took care of it. Thanks so much for being on my car story. Happy to be here. Thanks very much.